Hello everybody, welcome to another video log. Uh, stuff that I've been doing in the last couple of days, I've done a lot of enough records, things of different shape or form that were getting a bit behind. Uh, uploading a new release that's coming out in a few... next week. Uh, there's one coming out uh, this Monday, but that's um, the radio show. And then there's one proper catalog release that's coming up. A uh, week after that, and that's the one I was uploading. Um, then I was giving some feedback to some people who i been delaying for a couple of weeks because I wanted to have proper time to listen to the whole thing. I was also mastering one of the releases that are upcoming uh, because the artists didn't know how to do it. So I, I, I gave it a go, and I think it's sounding much better than it previously was, so that's that's pretty good. I'm not very good at mastering, but I know the basics, and in this particular case, uh, the songs were being too mono. It didn't have uh, the, the phase shift on stereo to open up the drums. That was the main issue with it, so I, I put a little bit of that and did the usual um, oxygen magic on it, and it sort of sounds okay. Not, not getting too much into Loud Wars, so I'm happy with it, and the artist was happy with it, so works ship it um i was also uploading a few of the older radio shows to bandcamp our bandcamp uh, doesn't have all of our releases which i would like to have there are some of them of the releases from our catalog that should not be on bandcamp because the artist specifically requested not to be and it's hard for me to remember right now which ones there was going back because um those were like emails that were mentioned two, three years ago, and uh, I don't have them anymore because I don't keep all of the emails that I ever had. I in in hindsight, I should have made like a database where I write specifically what each release the artist gave me permission for, um, or, or save the emails. But problem with saving emails is that there are always a lot of cross conversations with other stuff, so you end up missing. I I I have a few rules of thumb to make sure that I have permission to do certain things, and that's getting the, the the signed PDF. If I have the signed PDF, I'm usually okay with uploading to commercial platforms, but Bandcamp is a special kind of platform because of several reasons. Um, and some people don't mind being on Bandcamp, but don't want to be on RootNote. So I don't know. It's 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 uh, it depends. Each artist has their own take. Usually they let us upload to Bandcamp, but there are a few specific ones that would rather have on their Bandcamp only, which is fine by us. But I need to remember which ones there are, so I'm so they don't get upset with me if I upload it to Bandcamp now. And also there are some very old releases that Bandcamp didn't exist when we released that, and I lost contact with the people. Uh, they don't have a responsive email anymore, so should I upload to Bandcamp? Should I not upload to Bandcamp? If I upload to Bandcamp and they find it at some point in time, they might get upset that I got like four euros out of uh, uploading their release to Bandcamp at some point, so uh, I need to be careful of that. Uh, to try to contact them again or avoid completely. Uh, the main reason that I want to make sure that I have a fuller catalog on Bandcamp is because we have the subscription thing on Bandcamp now. For people who want to do it, they pay like $5 a year and they get access to all of the releases that we have on Bandcamp, which is a good deal for people who want to use Bandcamp and get access to all our music. But it doesn't really become that useful if we only have a certain percentage of the catalog there and not the whole thing. Uh, so I'm trying to increase the catalog releases on Bandcamp to make sure that they have a better deal out of that. So that, that's been one of my aims, and including... Uh, I've been focusing these last couple of days on uploading the missing radio shows, and I'm, I think I'm down to um, have missing 20 or 19 of them, which is pretty good. Uh, managed to do a lot of them already, and then I have to take a look at the individual releases and compilation releases and that kind of stuff. Anyway, so that's all the things that I've been doing, mostly for enough records. Uh, I've also been doing a few other things. Uh, Slay the Spire, I've been playing a lot of Slay the Spire, I, I got a little bit addicted to it. Uh, it's a roguelite kind of game, uh, where you have cards and you fight and you explore a dungeon, different paths, you can get different relics and if, according to the stuff that you get, uh, you improve the way your next battle will become. Um, a lot of uh, generative things on it, or randomized, uh, random number generator things on it. Uh, 
and I managed to finish with the first character, and now I want to finish with the second character, and I think when I finish with the four main characters, some other stuff will get unlocked that will change things. There's also mods for it, so I'm and some people already warned me that a lot of uh, fandom activity happens in the mods, so if you don't want the time sync, be aware of not using the mods. Anyways, that's what I've been focusing on in terms of uh, playing video games. Other stuff that's happening so far, the uh, Zion podcast came out. If you don't know what Zion is, it's a um, podcast about the demo scene where Oki and Axel talk about uh, stuff that happened in the demo scene recently. They uh, had it running about 10 years ago. They made, I don't know how many episodes, no, 7, 13, something like that. They didn't do that many. They was running for pretty much like one year, something like that, and then it started going too far apart between the episodes and they just stopped having time to do it uh family and stuff got in the way and now they restarted it which is pretty good and i was listening to it and talking about it with some people online on demo scene so if you follow demo scene if you're interested in demo scene that's a cool thing to check out uh, go check out design podcast and subscribe to it on the different places that uh, have podcasts it was released through Anchor, so it should be in pretty much all the podcast uh, platforms that exist out there. Uh, this got us talking on the demo scene Discord about a different sort of media that exists on the demo scene and uh, the holes that are missing. Uh, some people fill them out. Um, um, and one of them is having giving proper feedback to people, like proper demo feedback. If you do a demo for the first time, usually you, you get some thumbs up on Puet saying, oh, congratulations on first demo. Is that really a constructive criticism? Can you, could we do something better in terms of giving constructive criticism to people? And not just for newbies, but for old people as well. You know, some people just get the feedback that I don't like it, I don't like the colors, or this is cool, I liked it, this is my cup of tea, this is not my cup of tea. How does that help uh, people? It might help motivate people to try new things, but... Uh, how does it translate into uh, actual feedback of things that could have been done better? Like, how do we get into a deeper discussion of how things were made and how you could improve them and how you could do something better or different in the future? Um, and for demos, that makes sense to have that discussion. For other demos, it doesn't make so much. But there are still a lot of those kind of areas where you it would benefit from having some sort of public discussion or... Uh, inside discourse into into those kind of topics and there are a lot of making of articles on some um, entries which are very interesting to read and uh, hear about but it could also be interesting to have like uh, proper reviews like I, I used to do them on back when I was running demo journal back in the 90s uh, so I'm aware with the format and I also did a few of them to um, for some disc mags back in the days I tried to do it as video format uh, a couple of times, but it always felt like I was criticizing uh, the thing, which is the point of it, but like criticizing not seeing the point of view from the creator, because I'm not the creator of those things. So um, it, kind of ha it kind of has a bad reception. Uh, some people find that interesting, while other people just think that you just, you know, you're criticizing out of your ass because you're not interviewing the creator, so you don't know what he actually meant when he used this orange on this scene. You know, you're just assuming things. And I get that I get that feedback. That makes some sense. Sometimes I read some reviews, and I also think that they are full of shit. So um, that didn't feel like a role that I wanted to play on those kind of things. I didn't want to, you know... Uh, have my subjective opinion being um, taken as an insult or uh, because I'm the opinion that if I don't like something, I'm not going to tell the person that uh, you're shit, this was bad and you should feel bad. Uh, I sometimes say that just as a joke. I don't say it uh, meaningfully or I try not to do that uh, anymore these days. Um, because I don't think that brings anything constructive to to the to the to the process. Um, whenever I 
I try to always say something positive and something negative. And this is always subjective. And I try to make sure that it's always listed, that it's my opinion. And it, it it's, you know, it's worth what it's worth. Even when I'm reviewing music with, I don't know, 20, 30 years experience of reviewing music and h how an album works for the label, it's still only worth what it's worth. I might have all this experience and listening and uh, that, but, you know, I'm not a pro producer. I'm not uh, the expert of your genre. I only do the kind of music that I do, and I only listen to a lot of different kind of music. So it's worth what it's worth. And in the end, it's all about what the author wanted to do. So I think the main... Uh, takeaway that you should be giving people w on a review if you want to well there there might be two two different aspects that you want to cover on a review first you want to talk about what your impressions were to other people who also watched so you can like discuss things like or make them interested in seeing that thing or try to understand try to see the things that you saw so that's one side of it. The other one is giving a proper criticism to the author so that they can improve themselves. Uh, what things you got out of what they were trying to transmit. So what was clear, what was not clear uh, to you, uh, which might help them involve, uh, might help them evolve in rethinking the way that they present the 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 things, the ideas that they want to present. Uh, and what things you thought could easily have been improved with a little bit of uh, effort, you know. It's easy to say, oh, this all looks like crap, you need a better engine. Well, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. The, the guy doing it probably already knows that. But if you can say, for example, if you can find specific things, like, for example, I noticed that this shadow doesn't have, like, proper resolution, you could fix that with, I don't know, uh, mapping stuff or whatever, okay. Bad example. Anyways, I'm just using tech words for the sake of using tech words. Uh, but there are some tech details that you might have some insight on and that you know that the person is on the same level and that you could uh, give that uh, hint or start that discussion if the creator is open to having that discussion, of course. So yeah, these are the two um, <clears throat> main points of, uh, of writing a review or doing a review, in my humble opinion. But it could also be discussed with uh, other people about different things. Um, there are a few other ways that you could mention certain uh, demos. Uh, some people sometimes say, oh, okay, let's have like a, a list of all the best demos. What's that gonna? Okay, you're gonna give good demos some more visibility. That's a good thing. But how is that going to help the creator to improve? Um, so yeah, those were the subjects that we've been discussing on Discord. And um, I have some deeper opinions than what I'm being able to express right now on the, through this video. But I wanted to summarize it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> anyways, it's something that's been on the back of my mind for quite a while. And I've been trying to cover it with Mystery Demo Scene Theater and, and things like that. But I do agree there are some cracks in, in, in the narrative, let's call it, that could be filled up with more content that would um, that people would like to hear about or read about. Um, so uh, food for thought on things that I could possibly host or do or try to get more people involved to, uh, you know, give more visibility to demo scene, give more feedback to demo scene creations and stuff like that, which which for me is, is quite relevant as a content creator as well. <clears throat> now, relating these things with other creative areas, uh, demo scene actually has a lot of places where you can get feedback on more traditional arts you know if you do a painting who's going to criticize your painting who's going to give you any feedback on doing your painting if you put an image online who's going to give you that unless you already created a community around it and some art groups have that kind of thing where they meet like once a month or once a week or just have a couple of friends and they you know exchange things and discuss things and this was what used to fuel the art world and not not just people using doing the same kind of art but also merging different disciplines of, of art like uh, sculptors and writers and things like that you know getting people together to discuss things and how those kind of works make you feel uh, what is working what isn't working about them 
this was all before art became an elitist thing. Well, it's always been an elitist thing, but I don't know. Uh, digital art sort of changed the paradigm on that thing a bit, but it still feels very elitist, like that it's based out of popularity and not the quality of the work. Um, so yeah, and now with crypto art, uh, it's even weirder, so I don't know. Anyways, topic for another for another uh, chat. Um, I'm gonna wrap up the video with one more thing that I've been doing, which is trying to promote a little bit more uh, OMG OMZG uh, OMZG. <laughs> so OMZG, which is the online event I'm organizing, 12 and 13 of February. I'm doing a Shader Royale on the 12th of February. Or organizing it, I have 15 people already signed up, which is fucking awesome. Uh, and uh, still hoping to get a few more. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I would be very happy if we only have 15, but I, the more, the, the better the event will be, in my humble opinion. So uh, I'm still asking a few people if they're interested. And if you want to do some live shade recording or you know someone who can do live shade recording, you don't need to win the event. Just participate, you know, have fun. Try to, you know, reenact the, the some effect that you can do and, you know, uh, have fun participating. Uh, I think that's you don't always have to win, um, but you learn a lot by experiencing, you know, having to code something working in 25 minutes. And there are so many other people participating that you, you shouldn't feel like the spot is only on you. So, um I invite you all to to take on that challenge if you like uh, coding graphics. Um, yeah, so I'll be doing that on 12th of February. On the 13th of February, we will have a lot of different uh, competitions, which I should spam a bit more to make people aware that they exist. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on uh, for the next couple of weeks. There's also a creative writing deadline, which is coming up on the 31st of January, which is for the steampunk uh, anthology, uh, Portuguese steampunk anthology. Uh, which was on on December, but they postponed the deadline one more month. So I have uh, 15 days to come up with an interesting storyline. I've been having some ideas about it, but I don't have anything solid to make me start writing just yet. Anyways, that's all I wanted to uh, share with you guys today. Hope you've been having a great day. See you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.